Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is going to be an unboxing and this one I have to tell you I am so excited about. Not that I'm not excited about other unboxings I do, but this one, this one sets my heart all a flutter. I have recently been enjoying my Speedy 20 and Damier Ben. Let me grab it so, so much. And I love the Speedy 20 in canvas because it's smooshy and I like the smaller print on the Speedy 20. I had the Navy Knocker Speedy 20 briefly, and I'm probably saying Knocker wrong. It's N-A-C-R-E. And the LV in the middle of the Speedy 20 was just too big for me. And also I kind of felt like the Emprunt leather that they used for the Speedy 20 in that navy knocker color. It was just so soft that the stamping didn't get very deep and I was afraid it was gonna fade away. That's one of the reasons why when I have went with the bigger monogram bags like with the favorite new model as well as the Pochette Matisse, I do like having the bicolor because I feel like it makes the stamp a little deeper. And also for some reason on this bag, as well as my Pochette Matisse, the one LV in the middle isn't as distracting as the great big one in the middle of the Speedy 20. For some reason, it just feels bigger on the Speedy 20. So for this bag, I do like having the smaller print. And so I'm excited that the Damier Ben print is the regular size. And for my monogram a Speedy 20, it's also the smaller print as well. I love that. I feel like it makes the bag look a little bigger instead of looking a little smaller. The great big LV makes it seem smaller and more like a little kid's bag on my frame anyway. So not too long ago, towards the end of 2023, I unboxed this beauty and I said in the video, this could be the last Louis Vuitton bag in my collection. And I also said, Probably not, but it really could be because I felt like my collection was so complete. And since then, things have changed just a little bit because when I'm shopping, I find things and then I start to reevaluate what I have priority for using in my closet and maybe the lower priority things and try to shift things around and figure out what I'm gonna sell to buy and so on and so on. So obviously that was not the last Louis Vuitton bag in my collection because I do have a Louis Vuitton unboxing for you today. And let me just tell you, I sold two bags to get this. I sold one of them on a payment plan and I sold one of them to Fashion File. The one I sold to Fashion File was one of the bottom three bags. I did a video not too long ago called Top Three Bottom Three Bags Purchased in 2023 and one of the bottom three was the Eladon Valentino Glamlock bag. A beautiful bag but the strap flipping around on me kind of drove me a bit batty and so I sold that one to Fashion File and I got back about two thirds of what I paid for it. I'm gonna set this down for just a second. And then I sold this beauty, I know it's absolutely crazy, um, to a friend and a subscriber on a payment plan. And I'm not getting back everything I paid for this bag, but that's okay because I kind of feel like if you do not get all the money back you pay for some of these bags, it's sort of like the rent you pay to own them and to enjoy them and to have that excitement that you get when you get the bag. So you have to figure that in when you're buying and selling because that's definitely part of it. But this bag is absolutely gorgeous. It's just not one that I'm reaching for. And when I saw this bag that I'm going to unbox, I've already reached for it. I've already been carrying it. And I wanted to transition my closet even more towards having those bags that I reach for and carry and a little bit more away from having these beautiful display pieces. This bag is really easy to use. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you just open it kind of like you do a pochette Matisse. I have an organizer and a strap inside that my friend is going to be getting. You know, it's a big open compartment, so everything fits in there just right. It's just, I spend a lot of time running around going to ball games and you'll see the bag that I'm gonna show you. It's like perfect for that. So here we are seven minutes into the video and my bow's falling off. So I might as well just open it up. I've already used this bag, like I said, so it's not a true unboxing, but that's how I roll here at this channel. I like to use things and then show them to you. And I box them up just for the pretty part of it. 
So here we go, Louis Vuitton. This is the way they should pack these bags. I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Generally, they don't pack them the way I do. And it is very important when you ship these to pack them the way I do, because sometimes they get damaged when you don't. This bag's going to be shipped to nowhere else though, so it's okay. But let's open her up. See how the handles are upright? That's what you have to do. A lot of times Louis Vuitton gives you a box that's too small for the handles to be in the upright position. So with all of the ado and the fuss about the new Louis Vuitton denim collection, people have completely forgotten about this older, what I consider denim collection. This bag is from the Monoglam line and it is essentially a denim fabric that is coated. So where it's almost like a coated canvas, it does have a little bit more plasticky feel to it than regular canvas does, but it feels like it's a thicker coating on it. And I don't know if that's because they wanted it to be thicker to get this iridescent effect, or if it's because the denim has so much more texture to it that you need to have a thicker coating to be able to fully cover it. Because the texture of the denim, it definitely, you can feel it through the coating. While if you feel the regular canvas, it doesn't have nearly as many ridges that you feel as you do with the monoglam bag. I don't know if you can see that, see that texture, but the monoglam bag has a lot of texture. One of the things I love about this bag is that it has the navy handles. So it is essentially a waterproof bag. It's like a plastic bag, expensive plastic, but beautiful nonetheless. It's fabric, it's denim coated in this wonderful holographic type coating. So you have essentially a waterproof bag. The new denim line, they don't have a Speedy 20 in it. I think that the Speedy they have is a little smaller. I'm not sure if it's the Nano, but I don't like it at all. It has like this pocket right here and they only put a pocket on one side and it just looks a little odd to me. I'll try to put a picture of it in, but that bag is gonna have a lot more wear and tear, a lot like my Saint Laurent denim bag will have. Now this denim bag, it's squishy gushy, it's amazing, I love it, but I'm just not sure I would wanna spend the kind of money that Louis Vuitton is asking for their new denim line with it being fabric, cause it's just gonna get wear and tear. I'm okay with this one getting a little bit of wear on the corners because I sort of feel like denim, it's okay for it to look a little bit worn, but I certainly don't wanna get holes in the corners or anything like that. This is somewhat structured. I mean, it's a very slouchy bag. I do have an insert in it, but it's somewhat structured because of the padding and the quilting. And I feel like the new Louis Vuitton bags, at least from what I've seen on videos, it looks like they're very, very slouchy and unstructured. And I'm just not crazy about that. These are of course, just all of my opinions. That's all they are. But I love how this bag with the thicker coating on it, it does have structure. There's no base shaper in here. I do have items inside and I'm gonna show you what fits here in just a second. But you can see, even when I squeeze it, it does retain its structure somewhat. And the Speedy 20 in the Damier Ben, it doesn't have anything in it. So you can see it's collapsing a little bit, but there's no insert in here and it's still retaining its shape. If I held a Speedy 25 up without anything in it like this, it would not retain its shape at all. So that's one of the reasons I really like the Speedy 20. Even when I put items inside without any insert at all, and I do have a wonderful insert from Zumani that I've showed you in videos past, but it doesn't slouch that much. It has just enough give that it molds to your body. And I love that about this bag. I get the same sort of effect with this one. You can see it kind of dents in at the back if I want to carry it where it's up against my body as opposed to being a handheld bag. Another thing I absolutely love about the one that I got is the alignment. Oh my gosh, a lot of these have terrible alignment and people have had a horrible time getting one that's just right. These are currently still available on the Louis Vuitton website, priced substantially lower than what the new denim line is priced at. I believe they're $22.80, which I know is absolutely ridiculous for a mostly plastic and fabric bag, but I think this one is built to last. I really do. So let's check out my alignment. I mean, if you look at where the LVs are placed, it's just perfect. The bottom part, 
the way that the seam is lined up is about as good as these can get. I've seen a lot of them in videos and mine is just really good. The sides are also lined up really, really well. And I'm hoping you're getting to see some of the reflective properties of this. Some of these are really light denim. Some of them are really dark denim. I feel like mine's a really nice in the middle mix and it works really well with my team sports colors, whether it's this darker blue or if it's a lighter blue, it works really well with both. One thing that I noticed that this particular bag has that the normal Speedy 20s do not have is that they stitched down this D-ring holder. And I think that that is something that should be done on all Speedy 20 bags. Here's what I mean. If you look at this, this is loose. And so when the strap is hooked to the D-ring, it's really only secured by a stitch there and a stitch there. Don't even think it's stitched through here. I think that's just holding these two bits of leather together. The bag is lightweight enough. I haven't had any issues with it, but that's a point of concern that it could be a future repair that I don't want to happen. So I love that this is stitched down, point number one. Point number two that's different. Now, a lot of people might not like this, and that is that there is only one zipper pull and that it doesn't extend over the sides to the D-ring area. It does not open as wide as the normal Speedy 20. And for me, that kind of held me back with this one for a while because I do love how wide open the Speedy 20 will go when you pull it open like this. I mean, that's a pretty big opening. And in comparison, you're gonna see all my goodies inside now. The zipper is buttery smooth on both of them, but when you pull this open, you'll see the mouth is much smaller. So I did tuck the strap inside for the purposes of the unboxing. It is a navy strap and I absolutely love that. It's got the tonal stitching, which I also love, as opposed to being like a contrast white type stitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the bag. I find that I like having it adjusted to the longest length. So if you're smaller than me, you have a lot of shorter adjustments. If you're taller than me, you may be wearing your bag up higher on your body unless you swap the strap out for something else. And then inside, all the usual suspects are in there and I have plenty of room. I took this to a game the other night and I was able to fit a can of Diet Dr. Pepper in there with all this stuff. So I carried a bottle in in my pocket and then I refilled it with the can. So I can make this work just like the Marc Jacobs tote. So I have my pouch, which I, I really need to get a new one, but this is the perfect size and I can't find one. This is by Clinique. I have another little pouch that I keep medicine in. And again, this is just like a jewelry pouch, but my gosh, it's perfect for my needs. I've got a glasses cleaning cloth use that for my glasses and for my camera lens. I have my Fendi Diamonds card holder. This green, it just works with absolutely everything. It's crazy. I also have a metallic Prada card holder that I absolutely love that would look great with this bag as well. I have a key pouch by Louis Vuitton. I like to lay those in the bottom of the Speedy 20s, kind of form a base, which is nice. I have the Damier Eben key pouch. So one of them's for coupons and one of them's for other cards. I have a tied to go stick and I have my key fob. As you can tell, everything is just sort of jumbled in the middle. I've got an AirPods case and then I do keep some cash in this pocket right here. If I have change, I'll throw it in one of my little key pouches and store that there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick everything back in. The key pouches go first because like I said, they form the bottom of the bag. You can put an insert in here, but this bag is slightly heavier, I think, than the Demi Aben version. So I prefer not to have an insert in this one. And then everything else, I mean, the tied to go stick, yeah, it kind of goes towards the bottom. I'm missing my comb. It's in one of my bags and I don't know where it is. Just throw the AirPods case and this pouch and this cleaning cloth. All of this just goes in there. This is the thing I pull out the most. And then my keys. So it doesn't really need to be organized. It's kind of just a pit, but I don't have trouble finding anything in here. I just kind of reach around. Now, as far as the opening goes, yes, it does kind of grab my arm a little bit, but the zipper teeth are not sharp. So I'm okay with it because it's worth it for this bag. The other thing to keep in mind is that it only has one zipper pull. So even though it is not as wide of an opening, having one zipper pull instead of two 
it creates about that much more space than you would have if you had two. Since it has only one zipper pull, it also does not come with a lock and key. So this is not designed to be locked closed like most speedies are. I generally store my locks separately, but you can see you can put the lock through this hole and through this hole and you can lock this bag closed. I don't want my locks to get scratched up. Every once in a while, I'll put one on a bag as a decoration. Like with my Berry MM, I do that, but I really don't use that bag that much, so it's not gonna get scratched up. But for this one, I have it stored in a little pouch and I just don't put it on the bag. I think this charm is called the Chain Blossom Charm. And I absolutely love it on this bag. I normally have kept it on my Alma BB, but it does have a mix of gunmetal and silver. And I do not think it's available anymore on the Louis Vuitton website. I bought it directly from Louis Vuitton, I think in 2022, but I love that charm with this bag. I have a blue shirt on with black pants. And I just wanted to show you, this bag just goes. And if I put red on, oh my gosh, it goes even more. Just pick this cardigan up off of Poshmark. Yes, I know, more red. I'm like obsessed with red. It's really cute. It has like a tie that will go either backwards or forwards, but not all the way around your waist. So it's all drapey in the front with the back tied, or you can tie it and accentuate your waist in the front. And again, this is from Zara. There's actually a brand new one and a size small on Poshmark and I will link that down below. This one was a medium and this is like the perfect size for me, but look at how this bag looks on red. Oh my God, I love it. So if I'm going to a KU game or if I'm going to one of my kids games, this just works. While I'm at it, I'm gonna also show you blue because this is another one of my sports team's colors. And I'm not saying I've got to carry this bag to go to sports, but I do love that it's just so neutral and versatile. You can also slip your arm into the Speedy 20. My bag will go about midway up, a little bit more than midway up to my elbow comfortably. I mean, I could go ahead and push it all the way up there, but I wouldn't do that. I would keep it more towards my wrist and carry it like this with the strap dangling. And I do do that when I go like into a grocery store or a gas station real quick. I just do that rather than putting it on crossbody. So like I said, I was sort of held back on buying this, partially because of the alignment issues that Louis Vuitton tends to have with these, and partially because of the shorter opening. But I am so glad that I got this. And the sale of those two Valentino bags paid for about two thirds of this bag. So that made me feel a little bit better about purchasing it. I know I'm gonna use the heck out of it. So I'm super glad that I pressed buy now or whatever it is I pressed and ended up with this bag on my doorstep. I mean, this just goes with so much. And even though it's neutral, it definitely makes a statement without like, I don't know, just standing out too much. So this is my gorgeous bag of the day. Love, love, love her. Hope you love her too. Just know that you can still get this bag if you want it and it's priced better than that new denim line. And so I'll link it down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there's the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at the handbag housewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.